documented creeps, two buddies, let's call them Jesse and me, ventured into the wilds two or three times a year. Our shared college dwelling days now, a distant memory. See, Jesse was the seasoned camper of the two, while I hadn't even sniffed the musky scent of a tent before meeting him. This tale unfolds just two summers ago, on one of our annual treks into the great outdoors. Don't expect us to have gone deep into the wilderness, no siree. We trotted down a trail about a couple hours out, pitched our tents, and set up shop. No, sir, we didn't come for no strenuous hikes. We were there to commune with nature, soak in the beauty, and unwind for a good four to five days. Setting up camp was child's play for us. And the next three days? Well, they rolled by just as you'd expect. Campfires, drinks, and conversations under the stars, punctuated by leisurely strolls and a few rounds of board games. All in all, it was a textbook relaxation getaway, and that was the whole idea. But on the fourth day, as the sun dipped below the horizon, a shadow cast its length over our tranquil escape. Jesse headed out for a short walk to gather firewood, and I busied myself with the food prep. It started innocent enough, but as darkness closed in, Jesse was nowhere to be found. A half hour turned to a full hour, and he remained a ghost in the woods. Now, you might think 60 minutes isn't much for a woodland wander, but it's an eternity when you're gathering sticks. I reasoned that he had ditched the sticks for an evening stroll, yet another 30 minutes passed, and darkness clung to the forest like a shroud. I had turned on our trusty, though battery-hungry, lamp for a spot of illumination, but I knew it wouldn't last long. My concern grew. Jesse was the outdoor sage, the one with all the wisdom. Him getting lost made as much sense as a three-dollar bill. So I decided to kickstart the fire, thinking its warm glow might act as a lighthouse for my wayward companion. With trembling hands, I assembled kindling and sparked the fire to life. Yet, two hours passed, and Jesse was still AWOL. I was fast approaching the edge of reason, torn between searching for him, calling for help, or hunkering down in the tent. Then, it happened. Two hours and thirty minutes after Jesse's disappearance, and two hours after nightfall, a gunshot pierced the silence. It reverberated somewhere out there in the direction Jesse had sauntered off to. What froze my marrow, though, was the knowledge that neither of us had packed heat. My heart raced as I paced around the campsite, my lantern shedding light on nothing but my own paranoia. It didn't take long for my ears to catch the sound of hurried footsteps approaching. My hand quivered as I raised the lamp, casting a feeble pool of light. And there, in that ghostly glow, emerged a figure, a figure I could barely recognize as Jesse. His eyes, wide as saucers, oozed terror. I'd never seen a man look so utterly petrified. He whispered in a voice sharpened by fear, We need to go, now. We grabbed our backpacks, abandoning our camp to the darkness. My questions were met with stubborn silence, his lips sealed shut as if he'd forged a pact with the night itself. Not once did he mention the gunshot. Jesse is no pushover. The man can handle himself. So, I reckon he wrestled that gun away from the stranger who'd waylaid him. Maybe he had to pull that trigger to break free to save his life. Whatever happened, it etched a trauma in Jesse's soul, deep and irreversible. The man he encountered, the secrets he keeps, I may never know, but one thing's for sure. Our camping days, like the truth, remain lost in the dark woods. Thanks for joining us on this spine-tingling journey at Documented Creeps. If you crave more eerie tales, real-life encounters, and mysteries that defy explanation, 
make sure to hit that like button and subscribe.